Well, I have the most difficult task because if somebody sleeps after coffee, I have to be responsible. <laughs> so <laughs> I sometimes think I'm the best MVP in Europe on one criterion. You always have to find one criterion by which you are the best. And my criterion is that I have the shortest email of all MVPs. <laughs> so I was told I only had 40 minutes. It's difficult because I could talk on this subject anywhere between two hours and two days. But to do it in 40 minutes gave me a lot of work. <laughs> it's a big constraint. So I'm going to first show you how to do risk analysis with Excel alone. That is just plain Excel. Then I will introduce you to crystal ball. How many people here know about crystal ball? Yeah, less than 10. And uh, then uh, I will look at, uh, with crystal ball, at a small pharmaceutical marketing example. And then I will, if we have time, present you very shortly some applications. I have been doing uh, risk analysis with Excel for the last 25 or 30 years. And uh, when I began, uh, th there were two products in the market to do that, two add-ins. Uh, one was called At Risk, At because of Lotus 123, and the other one was Crystal Ball. And I looked at both of them. At that time, uh, Crystal Ball had one third of the market, and At Risk had two thirds of the market. And I looked at both products and decided that Crystal Ball was much better. So I chose Crystal Ball and I distributed it in France for 20 years. And my choice was good because today it's the reverse. Today, At Risk has one third of the market and Crystal Ball has two thirds. So risk is everywhere. Well, we have short term risk like this. This would be a good example of short term risk. <laughs> then. We also have this, which should be medium and long-term risk, like pollution. And then there is the, the risk that my wife was taking when I came over here. She thought I would be visiting and listening to some very good speeches. But she didn't know that Boreana is not only an Excel MVP, she is an MVP in other domains, such as this. <laughs> 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 so, before we look at applications, I will switch back to Excel. <laughs> yeah, you didn't know we'd have that. <laughs> okay. So, this is a very small model I made to ask Excel to play dice. You know, normal dice, one to six. So, I have a flag. You know, when you do uh, statistical uh, simulations with Excel, you have to have a flag. Because you have many formulas that say, if the flag is zero, I reset to original values. Otherwise, I run the simulation. So you often have to have a flag. So I have a flag. I have a counter that counts how many iterations we've had and the dice that comes out. And the dice, the formula is very simple. Uh oh, excuse me, I can't get my cursor. Oh, yeah, my cursor is working here. Uh, if I look, oh boy, I'm sorry, I have to. My computer is allergic to Bulgaria, and sometimes I have memory problems. OK, so if I look at my formula here, I can put it in English if you want. Uh, I have, oh, I'm sorry. What do I have to do? Uh, I don't know how to switch from. Uh, No, how, how do I come back to... Oh, duplicate. Thank you. Okay. So I have a count flag here, a counter, the dice, and the formula for the dice is quite simple. Is If the flag is zero, nothing. Otherwise, integer of one plus six random. There's a function called rent between. It's for people who don't know how to do this, which is faster than rent between. <laughs> Okay, so the problem I have with this is I have a macro because you need a macro if you don't want to go changing the calculation mode all the time because you have to switch from automatic calculation to manual calculation with one iteration. So I made a small macro to do that and I can 
say initialize and now simulate. Oh boy, I got 10 times the 6. Initialize, simulate, 10 times the 6 again. Well, how do you explain that? Anybody knows this person? No? This person is Scott Adams and uh, is the man who draws Dilbert. Do you know the Dilbert series in New York Times? Uh, and when I showed him this problem, he made a small drawing for me, which he published, and that's about random numbers. <laughs> so, in fact, this problem here comes from the fact that Excel has a calculation order. And Excel is intelligent, which means lazy. Well, I mean, you can't be lazy wi without being intelligent. So Excel is intelligent and lazy. Excel only calculates when it thinks it is necessary to calculate. So when the flag comes to one, Excel calculates, this dies. But the other times, the flag has not moved. So Excel does not recalculate, and it's always the same dice. So the trick is you have to replace the flag here by saying if the counter is zero, because the counter will move at every step. So we'll force Excel to recalculate the dice. So now, if I initialize and calculate, it's better. Well, better, but not perfect, because see, the first two percentages are wrong, and I don't have 10 dice. I can try again, initialize, and simulate. Well, now I've got one, one or two percent, which is better than norm, and still some strange behaviors. Because Excel not only calculates when it is necessary to calculate for Excel, but also Excel calculates from top to down, row by row, and each row from left to right. And if you don't know this, you have problems when you make stochastic simulations, simulations with random numbers. So in order to solve my problem, all that I have to do is to drag this down so that the formulas in the block here are below the flag and the counter. And so now, if I reinitialize and simulate, it's perfect. 100% and it's different dice. Okay, so that shows you how difficult it is to run r uh, simulations with random numbers in Excel if you don't know all those things that Excel calculates only when necessary, Excel calculates row by row and column by column. Okay, well this model, even if you're good with Excel, it would take you like 15 minutes to, or half hour to build this model, to find out it doesn't work, to write the macros and everything. Now this job that would take me a half hour with Excel, or 15, 20 minutes if I'm very good, it takes me about 20 seconds in Crystal Ball to do the same thing. So I will now show you crystal ball. So let's close this file. Close. It's in French, but I can translate. Well, not into Bulgarian. <laughs> you know, translating to Bulgarian is very difficult. You meet a nice girl and you say, will you, do you want to come with me tonight? And she says that, and, you <laughs> and then you think it's finished. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's make a new file here. And uh, I can put a big size so you see better. Oh, well, that's maybe a little too big, but it's okay. So I want to make a dice. Uh, maybe I can show the ribbon. I want to make a dice, so I, I have to have at least one value here. And then I have to say the result of the dice is equal to this. Okay. How do I make a dice? Crystal Ball is a very user-friendly program, and as I told you, that was the reason I selected it so many years ago. The vocabulary of basic crystal ball is limited to two words. What is an assumption, hypothèse in French, and what is a forecast, prévision in French. Okay? Crystal ball addresses itself to a wide market. So a wide market means you have to be very simple for people to be able to use it. They want people like Donald Trump to be able to use it. So, okay. so, so, <laughs> so we have to select an assumption. We select an assumption. And you see, have a wide a range of distributions. And let's take uniform discrete, which is good for dice, isn't it? 
uniform discrete, and we say we want to go from one to six and enter. Is that fine? Perfect. So, okay. So now we have our dice, and we could do stepwise simulations and get different dice. Okay? And then we want to say this is a forecast. So I call that dice. And okay. Well, if I didn't explain it to you, I mean, those two cells and the definitions would take me less than one minute instead of a half hour. And now I can run a simulation immediately. So I just threw 10,000 dice. I got a sore hand. Imagine 10,000 dice in five seconds. And then you have, you have the curve, you have the statistics, you have anything else you want. So that's how user-friendly crystal ball is. So now I will close this. Close, if I find it. Yeah, here. Because I'm staying close and uh, looking at French, so no savings. And let me enter a new file code, uh, pharma, uh, which one should I use? This one, I guess. No, pharma, okay. Okay, this is a simplified version of a model I developed for Sanofi. It was a model for analyzing the future efficiency, financial, financially wise, of a new product. So you have a launch here, you can launch it if you, we look at this assumption, which is already defined. We said we could launch it in year one, two, or three. And we define a probability of 20% for year one, 70% for year two, and 10% for year three. Okay, that's what you know about this new product. And then we also have the position on the market. When the product comes out, it may be first, uh, sorry, let me look at this here. It may be first on the market with a 50% probability. It can be second on the market with a 30% probability and third on the market. Now, of course, quite logically, if you come out early on the market, you have a better chance of being first, agreed? So we defined a correlation here by saying there was a correlation of 80% between the rank of the year it comes out and the rank in the market position. So we correlated the two assumptions. Then we defined some other simpler assumptions for the growth rate of the market in one year. If you look at defined an assumption, it is a normal distribution centered around 2% per year, plus or minus with a standard deviation of 50%, 0 0.5. And of course, good years come after good years, and bad years come after bad years. So there is also a correlation between good and bad years, and we entered that here by saying that each year was correlated to the next year. Okay, so we have a correlation of 70% from one year to the next. So now what happens? Let's close all of this. So you, you come out first or second in the market. See, if you come out first in the market, you have this row, out first. First year, you have 5% of uh, this kind of uh, healing items, 12%, 18, 18, 18. So this is... Uh, what we have, if I calculate with F9, see so this is why what we have here, uh, 5%, 10%, 10%, 10 oh no. Yeah, because, uh, I'm sorry, uh, it's position two. If you're in position one, F9, okay, position one, so we have five, 10, 12, 18%. If you were in position two, F9, we would have 3%, 5%, etc. You all understand that? So depending on the values here, you have different market shares there, and then different revenues, and different net present value at the end of the model. Okay? It's, it's quite a simple model to make. I mean, if you know Excel and Crystal Ball I, like I know them, a model like this takes me like a half hour to, to build. It's quite simple. 
So, but you can build that for two days. <laughs> so le let's look at this now. If you make a simulation, run. It simulates everything. Uh, let me. Okay. So see that shows that the results are distributed in three blocks. On the left is the worst results when you come out third in the market. In the middle is what you have when you come out second in the market. And on the right, have what you have comes out when you have first in the market. And then that's year one, year two, year three. Okay? So it's very interesting to see that with a stochastic simulation like this, you get all this detailed information. Because you know, in many companies, they will look at the future with random behaviors, like saying, uh, what is the top results, what is the most likely results, what is the ba bad results. They don't have statistics, and they don't have distributions like this. So we could answer many questions, like you say, okay, uh, what is, if I type 33%, what do I get? Oh, that's, if I type, uh, no, I, I didn't type 33%, did I? 75%. Uh, Okay, 75%, my step is 2 million. So I have, and in fact it breaks down over here because we have three blocks. After that you could also do a sensitivity analysis. I'm sorry, uh, let me do it again. See how fast this goes. 10,000 iterations in uh, how much time? In five seconds. It goes even faster than Excel would do it. Because in fact, all the data from the model are input into Crystal Ball. Crystal Ball calculates and then outputs the results back to Excel. If you wanted to do the same simulation, simulation with Excel, it would be 100 times longer than this. And then you can make analysis like a sensitivity analysis. New, let's say I'm interested in the net present value. And then it tells you that the main factor is arrival rank on the market. The second biggest factor is the launch year, and you have the percentage of each of those. Okay, so that's to present you crystal ball. How much? Oh, yeah, uh, I'm maybe I'm going too fast. <laughs> uh, so it's a very user-friendly program. And see, the big difference between crystal ball and at risk is that if you haven't used at risk for one year, you have to spend one of two or two days remembering how it worked. Crystal ball, I cannot use it for three years, and then I use it, and in minutes I'm back on work. So it's a tremendous time saver. Uh, I have, let's come back to our slides. You have it this time? Good. Uh, let me show you. So we were here, some applications. So some applications I did, uh, I've worked for about 10 pharmaceutical companies, but the two, my two biggest customers are Sanofi and Smith Klein Bichem. Klein, I forgot an L. Smith Klein Bichem. Uh, and Smith Klein Bichem was interesting because the man had a problem to solve with, um, he had the model to analyze and optimize and whatever. So he went to Crystal Ball and asked for the experts they had in the world and uh, he asked me for a price. After that, he told me, well, I've narrowed down my list to seven people, but you are the more expensive. And I said, people always tell me I'm the most expensive before, they never tell me that afterwards. <laughs> so the man said, yeah, I'll think about it. And then uh, six months later, he came back to me and said, okay, I'll try you. So I was invited to Stockholm to analyze the problem. And uh, I had a plane arriving at 9, coming back at 6 p.m. And he had made a list of what he wanted. And he said, okay, we do what we can today together. And you work on what is necessary for the remaining days. And then we went so fast that the whole list was finished by the end of the day. So I told, I told him, I told you it would not be expensive a posteriori. <laughs> you have the proof. And he was a very nice person. He told me, well, you can still bill me two days because that's good work. <laughs> S 
So that was, uh, I did, I worked for the space program of Ariane Air Space uh, for the 30 launches of Ariane 5. Uh, that, you know, uh, it's a tremendous problem to model, uh, to modelize because you have so many factors in uh, a space launch and some of the risks you can evaluate, more or less, and some of the risks you cannot evaluate. And then each time you have a risk, you can do several things. You can take a reassurance for that risk, or you can increase your research budget to try to reduce it, or you can do other things. So uh, when we first met with Ariane Espace, we l I was working with two engineers from the company, and we, we looked at all the risks, and we had hundreds of risks. It was very big. And one of the problems was to make sensitivity analysis. Because if you have hundreds of risks, even the biggest risk alone is only uh, like one or two percent. So in, in, in order to make efficient sensitivity analysis, we had to regroup the 300 risks into subfamilies. And then we made the sensitivity versus each family. So uh, I worked with them. I worked with La Caisse de Depot, is a big bank in France. <laughs> they had an interesting problem because they had a, a venture uh, for doing financing in transport. They were financing highways, toll booths, whatever, all, all sorts of things, and had many projects. And they were a team of three banks. It was Caisse de Depot in France, an Italian bank, and a German bank. And the, when they got to me, they had an Excel file that had gone totally berserk, out of control. There were external references all over the place. There were uh, reference errors all over the place. It was just a big mess because it was a little complicated. They had so many projects they wanted to fund. There was one sheet for each project. And then there were some collective sheets for the banks and the banks had each one third of the global operation, but each bank could also separately additionally finance this or that project. So they had a 70 page financial contract saying how they would behave together. And so they came to me, they said first, please solve all the problems, get rid of the external references, the reference errors and whatever, solve this. Second, guarantee that the seven pages of financial contract are respected by all the formulas. <laughs> and I'm not a finance expert, so I asked a professor at HSA, a professor of finance, to help me. So he did the finance work, I did the Excel work, and we, we solved it. But that was interesting also. Uh, I worked a lot for airlines. In fact, I began with airlines. My th uh, thesis uh, at MIT was on uh, airline uh, crew management. So uh, it turns out uh, I, I made models to simulate, for, well, work and re uh, stochastic simulations behave, for example, with airlines. When you have a series of planes arriving, you know, no, they normally have, at Roissy Airport at least, they have, a s uh, how much time do I have left? 10 minutes, okay. They have statistics about whether it is a long haul or not a long haul, uh, the probability that the plane will be 20 minutes early, five minutes early, 10 minutes late, 20 minutes late, 30 minutes late. So we have statistics about the two types of short haul and long haul and statistics. And when they plan for the planes to arrive on this or that terminal, of course they, pl they make an intelligent plan and they distribute the big planes so that the luggage don't have problems. But just imagine you are on one terminal you are expecting one 747, and then you get three of them. Because one which was 20 minutes late is coming now, and one that is 10 minutes early is also coming now. And so you have three 747s at the same time, and your luggage system will explode. So how do you handle this? Well, the model that I developed for Hawassi Airport was to uh, analyze using the statistics. I simulated distributions of the planes I simulated real arrival times. Then, I'm sorry. Then I looked at what was the impact on the luggage. And after that, at the end of each iteration, 
you can do that with crystal ball, uh, crystal ball. I called a VBA macro that would see of all the flights which flight they could reallocate to a different terminal to minimize the problems. And, and so we, we, we built in this way a policy of how to best reallocate one flight to a different terminal to solve the luggage problems. So that's another one. Uh, I've worked quite a lot with Electricité de France for the safety of nuclear plants. Uh, my colleagues and VPs have already seen several of my models about this. And uh, my last activity is uh, I have started startups in France very early. Uh, when I was at MIT, Apple and did not exist. Microcomputers did not exist. Internet did not exist. It was different. And all the venture capital of the world was centered around Boston. You don't know that, but Silicon Valley did not exist. Well, it existed ge geographically, but not physically, not as startups. And so, in fact, I was lucky that uh, in Boston, we had the man who created the first venture capital company in the world. That man is General Doriot, a Frenchman, who is one of the founders of INSEAD in France also. And of course, he, he liked to meet with people like me and the other French uh, from MIT and Harvard. And, uh, we, and so we said, when I came back to France with three, three other Frenchmen, uh, all four from MIT, and we said, we've seen all those startups around Route 128, the route, all the startups in the world were in the periphery around Boston. And we said, we'll come back to France, we'll create startups. So the first one we created is 1980. And I can tell you, f the five first startups I have built, I've lost 100% of each startup. <laughs> The last five startups I've created have one money in each of them <laughs> because today is much easier. So I also use uh, what I can do with startups. Uh, the last startup uh, I went into is uh, makes a medical diagnosis of Alzheimer by using a blood test. And we just recently increased our equity by 2 million euros. So maybe this one is going to be successful. As I told my friends yesterday night, if it is successful, it will be the most ex expensive model I have ever built. <laughs> okay, so, uh, yes, okay, no, I, uh, that's enough. We've done the time. Fa five minutes. Uh, another uh, small example to show you what you can do with Excel and with the stochastic simulation. Uh, I simulated a traffic subsystem. In fact, normally I never end answer tender offers because in France there are many of them are not honest. So this one time I knew by engineers in my company that this tender offer was for Sears. So I submitted. My offer was for, for 60,000 euros. I learned, I got the contract, I did the job, and one year later they told me that the ne nearest competitor was five times more expensive. That shows you how more efficient you can be with Excel and good add-ins. Yeah. Using Excel and Crystal Ball, I was five times cheaper than the cheapest one. So Crystal Ball gave, gave distributions of traffic times from point A to point B, see, and the payback of the period, period for the model was six months. That is, uh, within six months, they wanted to transform at an intersection that had a problem they wanted to replace like a, a stop by a red light or whatever, they wanted to make some transformations. And with the model, we discovered that if we did that, it would solve the problem at that place, but half a mile later, the problem would reappear. And so it did not solve the whole problem. So we saved them doing those works for nothing. So initially, this is what we analyzed. Uh, that's what my engineers looked at. So we looked at all the points, and all the points we put instruments to measure the traffic, how many cars at what speed. And so I had a set of files, Excel files, minute per minute, and each file was one day. So it would be a normal day, it would be a Saturday, it would be a beginning of weekends, beginning of holidays or whatever. So you had all those days, and they gave me all the files, and they gave me in fact half of the files. We agreed together, they gave me only half the files, I built the model, and got to a good result, so this is what it looks for uh, on Excel. So that's the, how I adapted to it to Excel. 
and I have green means good traffic, uh, yellow means intermediate traffic, and red is bad traffic. <laughs> okay, so you can analyze things very easily. So I made a movie. You could make the movie of a time and see how the traffic was evolving. So that's another nice example. <laughs> uh, I think I've gone through my time. So, okay. Thank you for your patience. Oh.